Okay, the following is uh, all the organs in the body cavities, and we're gonna we're gonna point to each one, tell what the cavity is, and uh, and this is for uh, the anatomy two A um, exam number one during the winter uh, intercession. Can I get a whoop whoop, everybody? Whoop, whoop. Whoop. Okay, good. Here we go. Uh, this this cavity up here would be the uh, cranial cavity. It's part of the dorsal body cavity. This is the dorsal body cavity. So we have cranial, one smaller part of the entire dorsal body cavity, and then we have the uh, spinal or vertebral. Uh, right below that right here so uh, we can take a piece of that out it's got it's surrounded by uh, cerebral spinal fluid and so on uh, what we can see back here is part of the muscular uh, skeletal muscular system uh, and the function of this is uh, for for movement and for uh, for doing work uh, or for isotonic and isometric contraction uh, we come out we come back to the front these are a group of cavities that are that are not a part of the dorsal body cavity or the ventral body cavity that's from here down. This is the uh, orbital cavity. Here's the nasal cavity here that I'm picking now. Uh, this, oh, let's poke the eye out. This is the oral cavity right there below it. Um, we've got, so we've got orbital, nasal right there, and then we've got oral. Below that, um, I'm not gonna do the regions because there's so many, but right below that, immediately below that is the uh, mental symphysis, so cleft chin, uh, right below it on the chin. These are salivary glands, part of the digestive tract. That are released, that are beginning digestion in the mouth and the oral cavity, and then down below it we have part of the respiratory system right here. We have the uh, the trachea. This is the thyroid cartilage, uh, the Adam's apple, um, and part of the uh, the uh, larynx uh, model. Uh, on its surface, we um, and that's part of respiratory system. Sorry, right below that on either side, forming this H-shaped gland is your thyroid gland. That's uh, that's controlling calcium, helping to control calcium levels and. Uh, and it's also controlling your, um, your metabolism, your metabolic rate. Below that is the trachea or the airway that leads in, and this is, brings us to the area that's in the ventral body cavity in the center of the thoracic cavity that contains four structures, uh, which would be the aorta, the um, superior vena cava, these two, and then posterior to that coming, uh, posterior to the heart is the part that just jumped out in 3D. Uh, that is your, uh, your trachea right behind it, and the muscular tube that's behind that would be the esophagus. All of those are part of the superior mediastinum in the central part of the thoracic cavity, separating the two pleural cavities, or the lungs, and above the, uh, th the uh, pericardial cavity right below it. Pericardial cavity is the bottom of that region, this region, superior mediastinum, and it's the middle mediastinum, which is uh, continuous with the pericardial cavity, the smallest cavity uh, that is within the thoracic cavity, this area here above the diaphragm. So once again, this entire area right here in the front is the ventral body cavity. It's broken up into smaller cavities, which is this portion, the thoracic cavity, which contains the pleural cavities, and pericardial that separates the two of them. The diaphragm sits below it as its uh, inferior surface. It's also the superior surface of the, uh, this portion of the ventral body cavity below it. This we'll call collectively the uh, abdominal pelvic region. And as we go below the diaphragm, if we look at a serous membrane covering these organs, we would be referring to the peritoneal cavity uh, in that entire area. Down here at the center, underneath the hypogastric region would be uh, the, pel the pelvic cavity, the smallest cavity in the vent one of the other small cavities in the ventral body cavity, and the tic-tac-toe regions you see right above that would be representing the, reg the nine regions that break up the abdominal uh, portion right above that within the, the ventral body cavity. So the diaphragm is separating thoracic from abdominal pelvic. Uh, pelvic is isolated right here underneath the hypogastric, and the organs that we see within the abdominal cavity below the diaphragm would be the liver, this is the gallbladder right there, the green structure. It's uh, usually associated with the right hypochondriac region, which is this. Right here in the center, we have the epigastric region. The epigastric region would have the, right lo uh, the left lobe of the liver, um, and it would also have the stomach right here, the part of the transverse colon right there, or large intestine. And if we were to take those two pieces out, the liver and the piece below it, uh, and look into it, we would see the pancreas right behind it. Right there, this is the pancreas, the main body, the, the hook right there, and the main body of the pancreas that's posterior to the three organs we just looked at. You're not filming these down here, right? Mm -hmm. So the pancreas is also going to be over here in this
quadrant or this region of the abdominal cavity with the spleen. It terminates into the spleen at the back of this left hypochondriac region. And separating the two hypochondriac regions is the epigastric region that we see the main body of the pancreas within here. Uh, posterior to that organ, we would find, uh, we would find uh, large blood vessels, uh, the inferior vena cava leading blood from the lower extremities back to the heart, and back uh, more medial than that would be the abdominal aorta, uh, the large, one of the largest vessels in your body. Uh, right down below that, we see the transverse colon, which is the separator of the six regions down below, as you can see, from the three regions that are, I just went over. So once again, the top three regions are right hypochondriac, epigastric, and left hypochondriac. Below it is the right lumbar. Underneath that in the center is the umbilical, and lateral to that would be the, uh, or left side of that would be the left lumbar. Uh, the last three regions are down here. They are the right inguinal or iliac. This is hypogastric, as I've stated already, and that's the, uh, that's the left iliac or inguinal region. So the organs we find in these remaining six regions would be uh, over here uh, at the right side, we have the right lumbar region. It would have the ascending colon, a little bit of the small intestine, and that kidney right back there, or that organ right back there, which is the kidney. Uh, as we move into the middle, we go to the umbilical region, which is mostly small intestine, but a small part of the large intestine uh, right here, the transverse colon above it. Obviously, these small flexures also would be present in the lower part of these two hypochondriac regions. And so if the liver were here, this would be referred to as the hepatic flexure. This one would be the splenic flexure. So you could actually include part of the colon or uh, the large intestine in the lower part, uh, uh, although I probably wouldn't ask that one on the test, you guys. That one, these flexures are a part at the bottom uh, peripheral portion of the, uh, the two hypochondriac regions. The main uh, structure that's found here, there are three things in the right uh, lumbar region. Notice that the right kidney is lower than the left because the liver right lobe is larger and it pushes it down. And so this portion would have the ascending colon, small intestine one more time, and then the kidney that's posterior to it or deep to it. Uh, in this region in the center, uh, this is where we got to. This is the, this is the umbilical region, uh, which makes sense. That's where your umbilical cord was connected. This is the small intestine right here, and therefore you'd also m maybe have a little bit of the transverse colon, although I'd mostly expect you to know small intestine in that umbilical region. Over to the left side, we have the also small intestine. We have the descending colon that's leading into the sigmoid below it, uh, but those two are the main things there in the, in the left lumbar included. With that would obviously be the left kidney. On the lower right side, we see the, as I've already said, the right umbilical, I'm oh, sorry, the right uh, iliac or inguinal region. That's going to have the cecum or the first part of the small, the large intestine. It'll have the vermiform appendix hanging from it, and it'll have a little small portion of the small intestine. Uh, this is called the ileocecal valve, where the two join, small and large. In the center, the hypogastric region, right in the middle, we'd have uh, some male and female reproductive organs that we're going to discuss later. Obviously, the small intestine, and we would have the posterior to this, the rectum and inferior to it, the urinary bladder. Uh, the urinary bladder is the one that, is it still going? Yeah. The urinary bladder is the one that will interface uh, as the connector or the organ that's shared by both the pelvic cavity below it and the, uh, and the um, hypogastric region above. Then the last region right here on the lower left side um, is the, uh, the left iliac or inguinal region, and that would have the sigmoid colon and a small part of the small intestine. And the sigmoid colon would lead into the rectum right posterior to the bladder that we've already discussed here in the, umbilical, oh, sorry, in the hypogastric and uh, pelvic cavity. Uh, you guys should study. Have a good day. <laughs>